Brian O'Driscoll on Off The Ball with Vodafone, main sponsor of the Irish rugby team. We all belong to the team of us. Yeah, you're welcome along. So two rounds done, three to go. We have the gap week now upon us in the Six Nations. Through brew, a few uh, bruised bodies you suspect will be very happy to have the break. Ireland, less you need reminding, beaten in Paris. Wales boiled down their game plan in Cardiff, will themselves over the line against Scotland. Uh, Sunday, less compelling, I think we can say. Italy lost game number 34 in a row in this competition. Marcus Smith was man of the match. Brian Driscoll, you're very welcome to studio. Thanks, Joe. Two weekends into this competition, Rome aside... Zero away wins so far. Oh, is that right? Yeah, I didn't uh, even... Okay. It's com- completely flipped on COVID games. You know, there were near 50% away victories. Yeah. It just shows the impact of supporters, fans back in the grounds, amazing, buying their it? teams. It's amazing how, how that can change so quickly. It's not least in rugby. Uh, rugby in particular, one of those sports I'd have high up on the list of sports affected by home advantage rugby seems to be right up there why so why, why different than other sports I, I think the physicality yeah. I think uh, the refereeing is so bloody complicated as well and the laws are you know interpretation more so than others I just but I think ultimately raw physicality I think yeah. you running into Atonio in Paris versus you running into Atonio in Dublin is it just a 2% true. difference <laughs> that's very now true. you're still getting smashed you're still, you're still in bits the next day <laughs> uh, it was epic wasn't it it was so good it yeah. really was I was lucky um, I was obviously working same as yourself but, but in studio and it was one of those games that you would have loved to have been at and been on the sideline or in close proximity because of the sheer it was gladiatorial that's, yeah. that's the only way that you could describe it and we were staying in, staying in studio it you know it's on days like this that you're glad you're retired but that's kind of a lie it's on they're they're the days that you actually miss most because it's men from the boys stuff it's who's who's got ticker who's got heart and who's ready for a proper fight and both teams were ready for it mm. um and it was just a it, it was very hard to come away really disappointed from it obviously you are disappointed with the result but with the way the the peaks and troughs of the game, the way it ran, the way it kind of meandered, and and you know the the plot of of getting beaten up in the first half, but then bouncing back, and then individual moments of brilliance thrown in there as well. I just thought it it, it was a game that had almost everything, and um, and yeah, it was it was lovely to see that we're able to stay with the big boys, to the really physically dominate dominating teams that have that we've struggled with in the past that we have found a way to counterpunch. I know it's one game, but we found a way to get ourselves back into a contest that some years ago we'd have been beaten by 30. Right. So disappointing to lose, but it's hard to be overly critical. There is a degree of you just can't win every game in Paris against this team. The first 40 minutes felt like clinging on for dear life. I mean, if the, I mean, the Mac Hansen try was just such a freak mm. genius bit of oh, something <laughs> skill but it was such a freak try it was almost I used the phrase last night like it was a defibrillator like it just stay in this game yeah. here's a helping hand yeah yeah that's what it was and and boy was it needed because you know you what was it um, it was 10-0 at that stage yeah it was 10-0 I'm just trying to think what the, the what the sequence of, of timing on that was yeah it was like 6 minutes like 5 yeah, <laughs> so like, 5 minutes felt like, about 20 minutes yeah, into 5 the game. minutes you're um you're, you're 10 points behind. And, and for any of us that have been there before mm. and experienced that frenetic first four or five minutes, you're chasing shadows and you're like, oh no, like the, the panic. And we obviously had no experiences to draw on to, to look back and go, oh, it'll be fine. You just have to ride this out. History taught us that we're dead. Yes. We're in major trouble and, and, and it's score limitation. Whereas, you know, the, the environment's changed, the... The comfort levels of being out of their comfort zone has changed in, in within this squad and within m- more recent squads. I'm not say it's just p- specifically uh, Andy Farrell's, but George or um, Joe Joe Schmidt's era, um, and and before that, I think we've generated a, a belief in not being as afraid going to Paris, irrespective of what does come at you. And they did need that Mac Hansen moment though to get themselves back into it to to just breathe yeah. and go, okay, right, it's not gone. Like Because 10-0, next score is so important. It really is. Particularly if it's a try for them, it's 
how you come back from three scores down within the first 10 minutes. And they start feeling so, very good. Oh, like, and the crowd is on their backs and they're just lo- loving life. So to get that, and then it, importantly as well, for Joey to knock the conversion over from the touchline too, kick. that's a really important kick too. So, you know, all of a sudden 10-7 and that just softens their cough a little bit and things, okay, mm. you know, we're, we're, we're not going away. Yeah. We haven't had to do a huge amount, but we're not going away. Can you uh, speak to us about, particularly in the first half, the exchanges up front? So uh, the lingering images that lots of us might have in our heads. 20 minutes, Josh van der Fleer carries into Antonio. It's a one-off run. The result is fairly inevitable. A minute later, France win the scrum, penalty, Ireland back in their own 22. Moments like Villiers carrying Hugo Keenan out over touch. The breakdown seemed to be just a nightmare. I mean, Gibson Park scrambling for ball and it was so slow. And then so many collisions. I mean, there was one with Tyke Furlong, which was just laugh out loud, him and Antonio and someone else. But, you know, Tyke did very well even just to break even in that one. But just this sense of being bullied. You knew that um, the breakdown was going to be an absolute SH1T fight, right? And you knew it was. It, like, we did a... We did a um, did a piece on TV before, and I'd been well, I'd watched the the France Italy game a good few times, and they'd five turnovers on counter rooking, so it's not like they're picking and choosing their moments. They're almost piling bodies into every single one. The tackler, the second effort getting up, and there's no doubt that Sean Edwards' influence has been significant because I've never really known French teams to get as as excited in defence as they have in attack, and their ability. Also, if you if you switch off for a split second, so when you feel as though the rook is won, that's when you're at your most vulnerable. If you dip your head down and you don't see where the collision is coming from, if you're not looking in that strong position, the rook looking up to see where to brace yourself for the impact, that's the difference between getting counter rooked. And then they start piling numbers in. And Villiers was one of the 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 main um, culprit culprits of it or instigators of it. Um, he, he started about three or four different counter rooks of which they had success in a couple he pinched a ball or two he was a nuisance and I, I don't know whether he comes from a sevens background and they're very good at counter rooking okay. it's a big component of what you do in sevens mm-hmm. is you know one man rooks but how do you learn to counter rook and how do you get people from that strong position so I wonder has he brought that forward from there but you knew that that was coming what what I, fect, uh, I felt it affected our lines of running and our timing an awful lot and if you watch the game again um, people overran the ball carrier way more than they did against Wales and you're on the front foot you can afford to be a little bit later but when you don't know when to begin your run because of the timing of the ruck because all of a sudden they're four, five, six second rucks you're trying to guess where your line needs to be or your timing needs to be and it was off not by a huge amount, but it doesn't have to be that far off for defence to realise you're not a viable option and push off. And when you've got good defenders like Fiku in particular, really clever defender, hedging his bet, Mofan as good defender from what I saw at the weekend, just th- they allowed a lot of things to unfold. And if you didn't get your angles of running right, like those leaguey passes of front door, back door, if the front door got too 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 far ahead of the ball defenders just pushed off and then used the touchline as a defender. That's such a great point because against Wales the rook was like clockwork it was even predictable from the stand so I'm sure on the pitch you can say that's going to be there and out we come and I start my run now whereas as you said against France are we even going to get it back here yeah. was the general feeling. There was also one or, it felt like there were one or two situations and I know of line out they're not really a power play team where they're looking to try and specifically you know you might look to hit into midfield but you have to have the option of going out the back and there was one instance where Bundy was what was on 11 minutes Bundy um, hit Doris short and Fiku was committed he goes out the back there and they're on it's like they're away they've got four or five around the corner so it's if you're talking about this team developing and trying to modify and change their game, they've got to still be able to play heads up, even on first phase, even where they think that it's a launch play to get them into the next into the next multiple of phases. That is the perfect opportunity to pull one out the back and read as you see, play what's in front of you, look at the body shape of Fiku, his, his shoulders turned in, ready to hit Doris. That goes out the back to Carberry, around the corner, and away you go. There's almost a degree the way you're talking of needing exposure to that kind of size and pressure to be able to keep your head in it the next time. 
What about at the breakdown then? Next time they play France, say in Dublin next year or maybe into a World Cup or whatever, that counter-rooking, is there much Ireland can do about that? No, because it's a size thing, isn't it? It's just sheer brute force. And it, you know, obviously, I think you have to be more focused on your body position. So it starts with the ball carrier fighting to get a good long body and and make sure that gives you know, the cleaners a target. But then those cleaners doing their initial job of getting any bodies off, you know, tackler off the ball, but then getting back to their feet and getting that really strong long body position mm. while still being on their feet, looking up, waiting for that impact to come. And that's why sometimes you need that guard in there as well. You know, we won a, won a lot of rooks against Wales with two bodies. And, but sometimes now, the problem with the guard is, you, you know, they go in, sometimes they can slow the ball because they stand where the ball is going to be. Whereas two clearers over, over a rook ball and it's on a platter and bang, you're gone, mm. you play fast. Whereas you put a guard in there, sometimes the scrum has, half has to go digging for it between it, his legs and then it just takes half a second longer to come out. But maybe they need to kind of look at that. Um, but it doesn't feel as though it, it's, it's a hard thing to get yourself ready for because the only way to pre prepare it is have bigger people doing it to you regularly yeah. and that's why they will be better equipped for having um, done it against France I, I think France are definitely the most physical team in, in, the, in the competition for, by a long way way more physical than England um, so the fact that they were able to um, stay in it and that's what you've got to do against really great French teams don't, just don't lose it early yeah as a matter of interest, how do uh, French and South African forward packs and on physicality terms compare, do you think? Yeah, closely, closely. Um, I, I think the French have more variety to uh, to their game. I think they've sure, got more yeah. skillful players, obviously, so you've got to pay respect to that. Um, individually, you've got brilliant South Africans um, in the likes of Colby and Mapimpi, but, um, but with regard to players being able to unlock defences mm. through footwork and agility and guile, um, I think France have have more to them. So when you're adding that with this huge physicality, I think South Africa are probably still more physical. Yeah. Um, but France are catching up fast. Taking lots of boxes. Uh, we're starting to see newer angles of the DuPont try. Mm. And that pass looks very forward in a few of those angles. Well, the, the big thing is, and I, uh, you know, I'm always mindful when you're when you're reporting on these things with your team that you've you've to try and take your green tinted glasses off. However, what are they looking for? What's what's the action that referees are looking for? And the question is, does the ball leave his hand going backwards? Because there's this momentum rule. So many passes actually carry forward. Sure. But the momentum rule or or is the ball leaving the hand in an action of going backwards? But yet, pure physics, the momentum of game going forward, the ball c carries forward as well. And like I said, it, it happens in dozens of cases every game. But this does feel on that overhead view, the spider cam view, mm. that it, it does leave his hand forward. I don't actually know if Entomac wanted to pass it to Dupont. I think he kind of gets hit just as he's trying to offload it. I think Mofana is actually his target yeah. and it actually flies out of his hand a bit quicker and just for, quite fortuitously. Now, Dupont runs that line all day, so yeah. he picks up those tries, so we shouldn't be shocked that he was on the end of it. But I think if the referee saw that view, I think he would have scrutinised it a lot more. And, and sometimes you get caught up in the emotion of it being a brilliant try. You know, it was a great try and a brilliant offload. But the reality is it did feel as though it probably just edged forward. Yeah. And you don't always get the replays that, um, that you, you know, in real time. Well, this is the issue. And we might actually, we'll do a bit of digging into this on the show at some stage. But the general quip we would all make at this point is, well, French director's not going to show that. Ha, ha, ha. Actually, if that's what's going on, it's a scandal. <laughs> like I, I presume he had access to that. The director, yeah, of course he did. Yeah, but, if he's shown but, shots of them painting on the sideline and every spider cam going, he definitely had multiple angles of this try. Yeah, he's got lots of, but like, I, I don't know what the sequence is. Obviously, I'm, you know, when you're in a an outside broadcast and the, the referee calls for the TMO footage, so the TMO then looks to the director. They're meant to cut all audio from the commentary 
so they make their own informed decision, not be, you know yeah. being swayed by by anyone. So, um, and obviously these these there's kind of twenty four camera um, setups these days with with you know big matches. So there's lots of angles to to come from. Um, I don't know. Does he show one or two angles, and while he's looking at that, is is he seeing another angle that looks as though it tells a picture that he doesn't want to tell? I, I don't know. Is the honest no, we, answer? We don't know, and I suppose the key question we don't know if the TMO saw that angle. Now, if the TMO has seen that angle and it's not shown on television, we, to we us, would have that's seen fine. it though. We would have seen it though. I don't know if that happens uh, unless where... the, unless the TMO has a, access to a bunch of different. I, shots. I don't think that's the case. I think the TMO because also if the TMO sees that angle. Yeah. I shown it Let's to the have a look at this referee. Yeah, he's shown yeah, it to the referee. Have a look at this one because it's the one that the other angles you might think, okay, there's might be something in that. Mm. That one you would scrutinize it more. But and if it went against you, you'd feel hard done by if it went for you, I think you'd go, oh, it was a bit lucky. Yeah. And that's the reality of it. Yeah. But we can't when television is such a an intrinsic aspect of the refereeing of this sport. We can't have just like Ah, uh, it's a French director. No, you shouldn't. You shouldn't. Um, if that's what's happened here. But it looked, I mean, why you, Why we didn't see that angle? I don't know why it comes str- after, the, after the case, you know, yeah. why it comes out a day later. It was like, oh, for social media. You know, I, I, that doesn't make sense. If that angle was available, it's not right. Mm. Um, but I guess... Well, I don't see how that angle wasn't available. Put it that way. It, you, you, would, you would certainly think that you know that it, it becomes very apparent very quickly yeah. that one you only need to see that once you go oh hang on a sec hang on a big sec yeah because I, I trawl through the different point you know on social media trial by social media and you're trying to take away all the Irish people but there's a huge amount of the comments on it from English and, and other countries and certainly the people that I clicked into that considered it to be a forward oh, pass. Yeah. It's irrefutable. So it's not just us. No, I don't think it is. And like, I mean, we're, we're saying here, we don't even feel bad about, well, sorry, we don't we don't feel great about it, but we're not, we're not in the horrors here with this defeat. It's not massive sour grapes. It's not a World Cup final which has been lost. But it's a, it's a very valid point. No, because up. there's other aspects in the game. Like we, we, you know, they'll be filthy that they conceded the Mac Hansen try. Like, just scored a penalty, 10-0 up, five minutes gone. Yeah. They concede off the next kickoff. Yeah. The, the Josh van der Fleer try came from a really poor exit after they scored. They failed to, to exit out of it. Porter gets a penalty. They kick to the corner try. So there's two moments hmm. that France really let us off the hook too. Now, again, I stress they were without the help of a TV director That's, in those instances. No, I, I accept that. I'm not trying to. I, I'm not. I, I'm just saying that the that games go and in, in th- they flow in lots of different yeah. ways where you do get your chance. Like there's other things times that. I felt we were hard done by. There was one where Conway got pinged for being offside and I freeze frame today. It was unbelievably yeah. harsh. Yeah. Those th- and then th- they kicked the, the goal. That's 22-7, th- uh, mm. you know. And then we get back to 22-21, but they're, they're, they're the marginal ones. Oh, sure. Sure, sure, sure. And I think you can all accept there'll be referee mistakes or questionable calls like that. But I just, let's let's park that now because we could labour the point. But it's it's very disconcerting when its home team, that angle is not shown and then it pops up 24 hours later and it would have had a big say in whether the try is awarded or not. It's, I don't know I, I whether, don't know, I don't know whether do French directors get an easy ride of it because they're seen to be a bit... Go on. Artistic. <laughs> I didn't know what word you were going to come no. out with there. Uh, like you, see, you think about all the shots, you talk about the guy, friend, the guy painting on the sideline yeah. or those shots of space yeah. like while the hookers were throwing in. Like there's a bit of, there's a quirkiness. You, we also don't see replays of the relevant stuff in, in, on French TV. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. don't. We see people in slow-mo like blowing breaths out, you know, <laughs> and like their, their lips moving a million, to- million <laughs> movements in a, in a second. Whereas you don't get, or pretty looking people in the stands. Yeah. You'll get that. You don't get, oh, why was that penalty given? You yeah. don't get it. So no, there is I don't know whether we, whether we, there's a little bit of, oh, maybe they're just a bit laissez-faire. I don't know. They're more artistic. Look, I'm all, I'm there all night for the artistic stuff as well. I think it's great. You know, it adds to the general viewing experience, but geez, a forward pass. Yeah. Let's work that in. Yeah, no, I, I get that. Um, I get that. I, we're laboring the point now, which is my fault. So let's move on. Can you explain then? So uh, 22 points to seven. Mm. Inwardly, everyone says, oh, that's game over. 
Now, five minutes later, Ireland scored two tries. Um, those two tries, and then this period in the game where slowly but surely Ireland did have a, a purple patch. Why was that, do you think? I think they just took their chances. I think, obviously, a, a 10 nil down. Um, I'm just trying to think of the sequence of it. So Mac gets back in, and then they go the 22 7 down, and then they get that Porter penalty. And we'll come to it, I'm sure, the decision to not go to the corner later on in the game. Yeah. But it's something that Ireland do. They go to the corner, they back themselves. And so when and it was a relatively easy mall try by their standards, they didn't have to work overly hard. They got it, whether it's fortuitously a bit of a shear, they, you know, France attacked the wrong part of the mall. Josh kind of spat himself out a little bit and then all of a sudden rumbled over. Seeing you're back in it, can't think, I presume, Joey, yeah, Joey would have kicked the the uh, conversion to and then all of a sudden you just have a bit of confidence and it's the game international sport most sport is about feeling getting on the wave of that momentum mm. and going okay fine we're, we're now we're only two scores away only eight points that's actually a you know a try and, and a penalty that's fine yeah that it just it the 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 mind switches into a less defensive mode and less tight and go okay we're 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 right back in this so we're yeah, there isn't this huge gulf between the two teams that the scoreline was suggesting, mm. and all of a sudden you play your game, you get a you know a bit of a sequence of of play together, and you put some of your patterns, and then you take a great opportunity. What you know that Gibson Park did it was a really brilliant clear out in the rook before um, before yeah. his snipe, uh, Porter and Conan cleared out by I think you know long three French players got stuck in that rook on the clear out. Yeah, Willemse, carries around the corner, you know, into guard. But then all of a sudden, Van der Fleer and James Ryan come hard off Gibson Park. Yeah. And he's thinking, oh no, I've got, I've got three of them here. I've got to think about the big units. And Gibson Park took advantage Spotted, of them, yeah. setting too wide. And then, you know, good gasket in. Really well taken time. Mm. time uh, try well, well manufactured and well thought out. And then all of a sudden, complete game on. Mm. Um, and... Ireland started making little inroads then where, like, where in the first half they felt incredibly hard fought there were That's, times the where players soften up though you can't, you can't okay. do yeah. you can't do that attritional game for no side no we're, we're all built the same way we're, yeah. like even though some are bigger than others you, you know we fatigue and you tire and you can't exert for 80 minutes at the same level as minute one as minute 80 it's just you can't do it mm. such are the strains of test match rugby so it is a, a, a lot of the time is about trying to ride out those initial moments okay. and just stay in the game with teams. And um, and the problem is the great sides are able to get away with an unassailable, unassailable lead. Mm. And and then you might flatter yourself by coming back when they relax a bit in the second half. It's only a 10 point differential when the scoreline never suggests that. That happens so often in, yeah. in, in rugby in particular. Mm. Whereas... Um, you know, they got themselves back into it and, and you know, France tightened up too, you know. Like with seven seven minutes to go and we'll we get to the end of the game in a minute, but they they, they played quite negatively, you know. They tightened you up, know, yeah. Pick and jam, yeah. box kicking, don't make mistakes. They're, this is a young, inexperienced team mm. that for the first time really showed that, you know, we don't want to lose this. And even the celebrations afterwards, it was a big deal to them. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Big deal. And I understand they're trying to get the crowd back on side and all that and go, but they were ecstatic with their win because they knew they were in a test match. Mm. Talk to us about Joey Carberry. Yeah, I, I, I thought he was... Um, I was going to, for a second, give him a score, but sure, they've all been done. I, I, I thought he was very, very solid. Very solid. Really impressed with the goal kicking. Um, kicking from hand was pretty good. I think his shot selection was good. The only thing is just squaring up around the corner. He's still running across the field a small bit. And if he could square up around the corner, he'll fix more defenders. Would he always have crabbed across yeah, laterally? He, That's yeah, always been he, a thing. He, he, does, he, he crabs for Munster. And Someone needs to get, well, I, get hold of him on that, really, don't they? Well, like, I'm sure he's... You know, he, listen, he's seeing you know, one of the best guys at squaring up in the game. So he's, I'm sure he's learning. And it's not to say he crabs every time, but when he does square up around the corner and make himself a viable option, he, he gives targets for runners off him. Like I was saying in the against Wales, he ran across at one stage, and guys can't tire, can't um, time their runs off him when he runs across yeah. the field. You can only time that off squaring up, 
and understanding where the hole is and where and how far from him you need to be to get the path or for him to put it behind you. So, and why is he doing that? Uh, there's probably a there's probably a. It depends on the personnel. I think some tens um, do it to preserve themselves because if you play up and aggressive to the line square, you're going to get smacked. That's going to happen. You run across and crab, you know, if you get hit and you're going to cross the field, it's much easier to move your momentum downfield with the collision and it, the impact won't be as big. Yeah. That's what I would say about lots of tens that do that. We've seen Sexton delay the pass to the last second yeah. and get yeah, and he, smashed. He, he does, he's the extreme. I think he's come back a little bit from that. I think yeah. he gives it a fraction early. I think he's copped on to that. <laughs> um, but I, I don't think it's that with Joey. I just think it's, it's a habit thing. Okay. I, I do, and I think that can be coached back into his game because he, he, did, he did some really good things in the Welsh game and he did some good stuff in the French game as well. Um, and I don't know, was, did Shane, Shane Horgan say that, that he thought that we'd have won the game with Johnny? Was that something that... He looked, he didn't feel good about saying it, but yeah, it's yeah, his honest opinion. I, I, I don't know if that's the case. I, I, like, I, listen, the margin's tiny, but I think Joey, it didn't feel like a 10 was going to make the difference in that game, which it was a physical game. Mm. I, I can understand how one of your best players could maybe be that difference, that six point differential. But I thought Joey was good enough. Okay. Um, the, but their defence, I think the timing of our runs just cost us a couple of times because of our timing on that ruck. And I think that was, it's, 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 some, it's nearly that simplistic. Right, yeah, because I, I was wondering why, why is this not as slick, even when we're in possession as the previous week, but the ruck, ruck speed is everything. I mean, it, geez, it comes back to these same Passing things. Passing was a little bit off, yeah, some, inside some, shoulder. Some knock-ons as well. Knock-ons too. Yeah. It just wasn't as fluid. When the, when the, it's human nature. When the contacts are that bigger, bigger, you're just, you're trying to prepare your body a bit earlier for the, for the impact. So would you have occasionally dropped a ball, corner your eye, you know you're oh, going to get smashed? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, you're trying to brace yourself and you're thinking, it's like, you know, the full back that drops the ball, um, an easy catch because he's already thinking about what he's going to do with it. It's yeah. a bit like, that's the same as bracing yourself for a big collision where I got a tense here and you just, your focus is taken off the actual catching of the ball. Who were the best Irish individual performers for you? I thought Tyg Furlong was outstanding. 72 minutes of him as well. He was outstanding. Yeah. Um, I think his ability to play at the line is just remarkable for a man his size, but also his energy to get into defensive positions um, and realise, he, he reads it very well, um, realise where the danger may lie. And um, he's a really s smart, smart player. Um, to, to have to scrummage that way and, and obviously we had a bit of struggle on, on what looked like the other side of the scrum but he was very proficient there incredible work rate um, and I thought he was him and Doris are our best two attributes in the in the hinge in the diamond the ball carrier right he, he he's the best at carrying as if he's going to carry the ball and but then throw in the pass he's better than Doris because probably he's a more dangerous ball carrier to visually. Yeah. He's a big unit. Yeah, if you don't respect your that, yeah. yeah. Who else? Um, um, I thought Doris got through an awful lot of work. Uh, Ty Byrne, you know, a lot of work as well. Uh, I thought Dan Sheehan was very good mm. when he came on. Really good. He played, must have played an hour. I thought he was very good, carried extremely well um, yeah I think them okay I didn't want to reduce this conversation down to the 70 second minute decision yeah but let's talk about it now then I think it's a really important decision okay. and, and, and based on what we what I mentioned earlier on if this wasn't a team that in the last 18 months or two years if this was a team that had kicked their goals and not gone to the corner, I don't think this would be that big a discussion. But this is an Irish team that has time and again turned down points to go to the corner to back their mall. And progressively over that period of time has had more and more success. 
The other thing as well is Joey for the Van der Fleer try kicked in an, an unbelievable kick to the five metre. Right, brave as you like. We scored a relatively easy mall try mm. from that moment. You're six points behind. Okay, you've scored a couple of tries. Uh, they scored. They've scored three tries at that stage. Um, you've the potential to get back in the game and also get a try bonus. Um, so worst case scenario, you come out of the game with you miss the kick. You come out of the game with two points, or um, and. But yet you kick the goal and then you're thinking you're going to come down again and get another try scoring chance. I just in eight minutes, I, I just didn't get it. I just I and it, it felt as though James didn't really know. And I think he probably missed Johnny there because Johnny, besides being captain, actually the personality to be able to help him in make coming to that decision. Pete was off the field mm. at that stage. He'd only been on for, you know, a couple of minutes. Um, so. I think if Johnny's captain there, they go to the corner. I do, mm. I do. And and they go all out. They think, win it now. It's only eight minutes. Eight minutes is a long time in a test match, but it's also a very short time, particularly against a, a ferocious team that, and you've been beaten up all afternoon. Mm. So I, I just thought it was, a, it was a strange call because of their mentality over the course of the last few years of going after it. And, what what initially perceived to be greedy of turning down three points, but then became very fruitful to them mm. of picking up fives and sevens a lot of the time, and why you wouldn't in that moment then go to that I I, I didn't understand it. What do you think their thinking was? Well, I, James, all I can take it as James Ryan's face value what he said. He, he kick the goal and then have another opportunity to win the game, which. In the end, they still had a chance. They still got got the ball back with, you know, Henderson had an unbelievable with after the yeah. penalty that the unbelievable rip, and they got possession down in the opposition, like 30, 30 meters out, like so they had a chance to go and put a phase together. Um, that five but, six minutes after actually were very frustrating in yeah. hindsight. Weren't pretty yeah. handled. I wondered as well were they thinking, well, let's get get back to three. That puts a certain pressure on the French. They have to be very careful about offside. They don't want to give away a penalty necessarily. It's and also for a draw. Yeah, but that's the thing, right? So we've had no away wins. A draw, is that that disastrous a result? It puts Ireland in a great position in the championship. From a psychological point of view, it says to the French, we've gone toe-to-toe with you. You pulverise us for a lot of this game. You still couldn't beat us. You can't go out and think draw. But people say there aren't I, many opportunities to win in Paris. Equally, there aren't many opportunities to win a Six Nations. Yeah, oh, but this it doesn't feel like this team is playing to just win a six for a draw. Nations. Well, no, look, a, dr- a, a draw under the circumstances the, the would have been a, a great The mentality switch of playing for a draw, I think, doesn't sit well with me with the, with seeing this team. Other sides, I could see, oh yeah, no, a draw is a great result. <laughs> okay. I Just this team, I don't think that's... In their minds. I'm half guessing here. I'd love, I'd love to talk I, to James I Ryan. I don't think James Ryan was thinking, thinking hopefully we'll get a draw out of this. Well, more, more, we'll come back and try and win and we'll try and get that try. But if things aren't going well, do you know what? Drop goal is always an option. Maybe you get a penalty. That's, it's like a consolation. It's kind of say, hedging your bets a touch. We've seen teams kick drop goals to have a losing bonus point. So it's not beyond the bounds. I'm trying to guess a touch here, you know? Yeah. And, and listen, it is a guessing game as to what the thinking was. Um, I do agree to leave yourself three points was a curious margin to leave mm. by taking the points. You know, it's like, well, we still need a try, so let's just try and get the try. I, I is, get But it. the other thing is, well, it's not like they had scored no tries. Sure. So, do you... Uh, I, but like the, the bo- did anyone talk, think about the bonus point? Did, were you guys talking about the, the prospect of a bonus point? Uh, of getting the four tries. So, yeah, the two... Lo- t- so, no, worst case so. scenario, two... Two point. No less. No. To be fair, that didn't come up so much. A, a point that was made was uh, four minutes previously after Tigburn's miracle fifty twenty two. Mm. They do lose that line out yes. in that exact corner, yes. and, you, and you've, you've got second row James Ryan going. Jeez, do I want to be the captain here, captain here for the sixth time to pick the corner, and then we lose the line out? And I'm like, oh, that's, that's a that was a killer. It was. A, it was. In fairness, it was a brilliant steal, though. Like it doesn't look as though there's a lot wrong. Like the throw's good. Alan Quinn they thinks just it was illegal. He thinks it's illegal. The guy came across too much to win that one. But he got, he gets it, and he didn't, he didn't seem to foul. You know, it, it didn't, it, it didn't distort the body position of. Fair enough. Yeah. Was it, was it James Ryan? I think it was James Ryan. Yeah. So that, that would linger in your memory four minutes later. You know, maybe that's part of the thinking. 
I, yeah, I, 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 I don't put that down to a negative, really. I just put, I, I, I that's a, in, in France's list, that's a positive tick from their defensive line out. You know, because it didn't see, feel as though it was a missed jump, maybe a fraction of a missed jump uh, uh, lift from Tyg Byrne. I think he was a little bit late to it, but it didn't feel like the elevation of where the, he, it wasn't, it was like an overthrow. It was thrown at a at a good extension, hmm. and Jalonch was it managed to get in? I don't sure, know who exactly. it was got in and got an arm to it. Yeah, I just thought, wow, it's that's a, a that's play. a that's a clutch moment. Mm. Yeah, uh, there was another point I just wanted to make there on all that, which was I uh, felt significant. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, what's going on in my head? Sugar, it might come back to me. Anyway, these things happen. So uh, yeah, it's, it's a difficult one. For Ryan and for the team, and oh yeah, sorry, this well is done. It. You bought Ooh. yourself time there with a little bit of filler as well. Look at that. I wouldn't say it was the greatest filler I've ever produced. <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult. <laughs> this broadcasting's tough. Uh, why don't the coaches increasingly have a say in this? Why is James Ryan not looking to the stand, Andy Farrell? Well, I think there was there was talk. Someone mentioned. I don't know. Was it was it uh, Rory Best said. Did he hear that there might have been a call come on from from the touchline to say take your take the points? Now I didn't hear anything clearly on the referee mic or anything, but it's very hard for for maybe they didn't know. You've got to you've got to go with the feeling of, I, of your captain. Well, can I question that for a second? You've an inexperienced captain. You, you Johnny's not out there. You're also who knows? Maybe the second row is thinking. Oh, Pete, out Pete not me. there is big too. Okay, sure. But sometimes, I mean, Ronan O'Gara has talked in the past about how sometimes a, a number ten as captain might not want that kick, you know, on yeah. some level. And so let's go for the corner because me taking on that kick's a tough kick. You're not a disinterested party, so maybe a dispassionate coach with more experience than say Ryan. At that point, should say pre-game. You know what? We've me, we've Paul O'Connell, we've experience in the box. Last five ten minutes, big decisions. Have a look up. We'll take it out of your hands a touch. We'll give our sense. I don't. You look at NFL. You look at so many sports. I kind of think it's it's odd that in rugby it's like, well, hey, I'm just the head coach. I couldn't possibly have a say in this. But NFL decision. is stop start and it's very strategic and it's very it's like a game of chess. Sure. Rugby's not like that. But this is a stop he, moment. No, you've got to feel you. you the flow of the game and the sense of whether you have have a team in a particular aspect of the game is very much a sense you generate each time you're out on the field. Sure. So the games, times that you felt, oh my God, we're, we're flat here or we're being beaten up here or our mold, the mold defence is too good. We've yeah. got to kick our goals. It's, makes, no, it's an you. obvious choice. But if we follow that logic through then none of us can express an opinion on this because seemingly unless you're on the pitch and have a feel for it we don't we don't understand and yet people are very strong no, well, I don't understand I'm just giving my opinion, opinion. Yeah. Well, that's not, I, I'm not saying I'm right or wrong I'm just saying I, this is just one person that thinks sure. that watching from the outside it was like I thought that was strange it doesn't mean that James Ryan has gotten it wrong and that you know in, in an, on another day kick the goal Something happens off the restart, you know, get themselves into a try scoring opportunity. They mm. get it or they don't. Sure. They win the game. He's a hero, brilliant captain. See, it's like the, the, this isn't this isn't make or break. You know, he, he went one route and it didn't work out. It wasn't like it was no, it was the wrong route. He 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 did what he thought sure. was best and in, in that moment. And you got to, you you roll with that. Listen, I wanted a draw. I was happy. I, I, I had no problem. Uh, did you did you never, as captain, in all those many many occasions where you were captain, did you ever have a glance up at coach's box to get a feel? No, I usually like with with Ireland, I'd usually um, discuss it with whoever was there. Mm. So be it Paulie or Raj or Johnny, um, and go, what do you think? And. Again, you get a sense. I, I sometimes I, I'd have asked them. Sometimes I'd have gone nuts. Simple post. Okay, but it was a lot more kicking then. A lot more focus on keeping the scoreboard ticking over. The games change. It's evolved. Sure. Yeah. Where now teams are after more. They realise they need to score tries to win games, and build on the momentum you know built up. So, um, yeah, it was probably a lot easier. Other than the occasional decision, you'd be like, oh, this is a tough one. Particularly if it's a very difficult kick. 
for the most part, if it was kickable three or something that was right inside Raj predominantly because he was the one for I had for mm. for a decade, and because I had so much confidence in in him, it was like right, shot at goal. Yeah. And he never second guessed it. Yeah, seventy second minute was just that horrible sweet spot of. There's a little bit of time, but it's very late. You know, if it was seventy seven minutes, eight they would minutes go for is it. still time. Yeah, you know, it is. So I'm as much as I'm. It's not black and white. It's really not black and white. And and I'm querying it because I personally, if I was there, I would have gone to the corner on the basis of what I've seen. But yet I, I didn't have the fields out there, right? <laughs> Which, I, you know, is all important. Uh, so, I look, it's so interesting. It was just one aspect of such an interesting game in so many ways. So, so overview, Ireland in this championship. I mean, they're now hoping for a French slip-up. France have to go to Murrayfield next. They haven't won there since 2014, which is an amazing mm. statistic. What odds of a French slip-up? And then, you know, are we still feeling pretty good about where Ireland are? Final word on all this. I think I'm going to go second first. Sure. I'm feeling pretty confident where Ireland are. Okay. Very, very happy in a defeat. Right, As happy as you're going to be in a defeat because I, I think they showed real bottle and heart and spirit and didn't surprise me a, t- a friend of mine was texting me saying this is going to be a big score by the end I was like nah it'll be a one just during the game yeah. it'll be a one score game this team doesn't capitulate and yeah there's a real confidence that comes from what they've done in the last six months in particular nine months mm. um, since they've clicked and and that November has really been a, a serious shot in the arm um, so yeah, obviously they need to go and try some new combinations, which I think they can comfortably do against Italy. They can take a couple of risks; it doesn't have to be crazy, mm. um, and and get a bonus point victory, and go over to Twickenham with confidence on the back of two good victories and a and a very close uh, run defeat, mm. and not have anything to be afraid of on the basis of what we've seen from England so far I'm yeah. sure they'll get progressively better as the tournament goes on Tuolagi's just been called into the squad so that okay. changes them in a way it does yeah. it does but, so you're, this is not a confidence I was going to use Sapper. The, destroying but it's not a this is, this is not a, a defeat which saps the confidence really isn't yeah. really isn't I don't think so I think you could even sense from Andy Farrell's interview afterwards He, I, you know he talked about being proud I was very proud of seeing that performance as well because as part of teams in the past that got absolutely smashed over there, I know what that is like, that first five minutes. And to find a way back into the game takes a lot of mental resolve and mental toughness. And there's no doubt they have the physical attributes and even to be able to deal with what came at them for that first 40 minutes and then, like I said, counterpunch and find a way back into it. You learn an awful lot about yourself as individuals and as a team. Mm. And the Ultimately, the bigger goal is about 18 months' time, about being in that situation again against the same opposition in a quarterfinal maybe and going, do you know what? They, they've got to play pretty good stuff to beat us because we're a good team. And France, Grand Slam? Um, not a fait accompli. I think it's... I think they're... I think, you know, they have to go to Cardiff too. I think they'll beat Wales. I do. I just think they've too yeah. much. Yeah. And they've been just the watching. Oh, sorry, on, on the base of what Wales did against us, and, and on Saturday, you know, it was much improved, but still away from okay. that standard. And but Scotland could be very tricky. You know, I think they'll probably they will have enough because the, again, I think front five. I just think the power of that French front five is just too much for for anyone. And I think they'll beat England in Paris. Yeah, in Paris. So. The only, for me, the only way that they won't is if, if Scotland managed to do a job on them. Good, so we're reliant on the Scots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Our Celtic brethren. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for now. It's been a great championship so far. So that's two rounds done. Uh, France at Murrayfield next, Ireland obviously of Italy. And then we'll uh, carry on. Our rugby coverage here and off the ball is with thanks to Vodafone, main sponsor of the Irish rugby team. We all belong to the team of us. Brian O'Driscoll, thanks so much. Cheers, Joe. Brian O'Driscoll on Off The Ball with Vodafone main sponsor of the Irish rugby team we all belong to the team of us